Welcome back, Tide Pool Explorers. We have already learned about sea stars and seaweed, specifically kelp. Now, let's dig in and see what we can learn about next. What's coming? It's sea urchin! I am in the middle of a huge rock. Do you see all of these holes? What has burrowed or dug its way into all of those holes. Yeah, it's a whole bunch of sea urchins. Their super strong teeth can dig right in. That's how they hold on to the rocks with their tube feet and they eat that algae and they keep eating and eating and eating until they get themselves a nice little hole which they can hang out in. <laughs> Did you know that sea urchins are so strong and persevere and persist so much that they can dig holes with their teeth even into metal. That's right. Some of the steel poles on docks have been found to have holes in them. And then after some research, people found out that sea urchins made those holes in the metal. We have a special guest today. It's a documentary filmmaker from England. Sir David Attenborough. Can you believe it? Let's go see him. I'm out in the field, out in the field, looking for tide pools out in the field. Yeah. Just beneath the surface of the ocean, where ocean meets land, is a special place. If you're lucky enough to stop and look, you might see an environment teeming with biodiversity, with sea stars, barnacles, and so much more. Hidden in those holes is what we will be looking at today. I'm David Attenborough. Here I am in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of California. Watch your step because it is dangerous when walking next to sea urchins. Sea urchins are found throughout the world with over 950 species. They can be found in all temperatures of water. In the shallows of the kelp forests to the deep waters and rocky beds. Sea urchins primarily feed on algae but they are opportunistic and can be found eating mussels, barnacles, sponges, even deceased sea urchins. Welcome back to the classroom, everyone. Today, we're gonna to do a little primary and secondary research together. Have you ever found shells on the beach? This is a very special shell. It's not from a snail. This is from a sea urchin. We're gonna check it out up close. That's our primary research. And our secondary research is doing one of my very favorite things, reading a book. We'll check out a teeny little snippet from this book and a book online from Epic as well. Let's do it. One thing I really like to show in class is this right here. This is the skeleton of a sea urchin. It's called a test. And so here it is up close. And you can see all the little spots here. That's where all the spines were connected. And that very top right there, that's the anus. That's where all the waste just comes out the top of the sea urchin. Let's turn this over. Isn't that beautiful? Look how all those spines come together. And then this part right here was this opening for. Yeah, on the bottom of the sea urchin, that's its mouth where it connects to the rocks. I just found something really cool as I looked at this again. Part of what you can see here are the spots for the spines right here, these little bumpy parts. That's where the spines attach. And look carefully, look really carefully right here. You can see those little teeny holes right there? That's where the tube feet attach. So they're all kind of mixed up here on the bottom where those tube feet are attaching right there in between where the spines are.
Sea Urchins by Heather Adamson. What are sea urchins? Sea urchins look like tiny fireworks under the sea. These echinoderms are known for their spiky spines. They move, eat, and live on the ocean floor. There are more than 800 types of sea urchins. Here are a couple of them, the purple sea urchin, the red sea urchin, and here are some other echinoderms, sand dollars, sea cucumbers, and sea stars. Sea urchins are found along ocean floors around the world. They live in coral reefs, kelp forests, and rock pools. Sea urchins do not swim. They move along the bottom of the ocean using tiny tube feet. Species Spotlight, Purple Sea Urchin. The lifespan is up to 50 years. The depth range is up to 525 feet. And the conservation status is there of least concern. There are plenty of them. Spiky, spiny bodies. Sea urchins are small and round. The smallest ones are less than half an, 0.5 inches or 1.3 centimeters across. The largest can be seven inches or 19 centimeters across. Many are about the size of a tennis ball. Here is the actual size of the smallest sea urchin, which is 0.2 inches. And the largest is the red sea urchin. This is the size of it compared to a human. So it's about the size of, I don't know, maybe a human's head. Sea urchins come in many different colors. They range from blue to light pink. Their spines can be sharp or wispy. Some sea urchin spines are venomous, which means poisonous. This type of sea urchin is called a flower urchin. Wow. Identify a sea urchin. Spines, tube feet, mouth. A hard shell covers the soft bodies of some sea urchins. All sea urchins have a mouth near the bottom of their bodies. They have five teeth. Teeth. The teeth can grow back if they fall out. Algae eaters. Sea urchins are hungry creatures. They spend most of their time eating or resting. Black sea urchin. Their tube feet move them around as they eat. The feet also help push food into their mouths. Algae is a favorite meal for sea urchins. They use their teeth to scrape it off rocks and coral. These omnivores also eat mussels, barnacles, and dead fish. Oh, there's a bunch of barnacles. Catch of the day, algae, common mussels, and kelp. Sea urchin life. Sea urchins have many predators. They are a favorite meal for hungry crabs, eels, and sea otters. Some use their venomous spines for protection. There's the sea enemies, the California sheepheads, sea otters, and wolf eels. Sea urchins start life as tiny eggs floating in the water. The eggs become tiny larvae. Larvae, eggs. The larvae grab onto rocks or pieces of coral. Soon they will grow to become adult sea urchins. Slate, pencil, sea urchin. And here is from one of my favorite tide pool books. My book from a long time ago. Look at that amazing illustration of that purple sea urchin. I really love this book when talking about sea urchins because the super close up picture of the mouth of a sea urchin is just amazing to me. Here's where I feel like I can really see that sea urchins and sea stars are related. Because look at these five parts, right? These different teeth. I want to read you the caption of this photo. An enlargement of the sea urchin's five teeth. These are used for scraping, pulling, and tearing algae off hard surfaces. The teeth continue to grow throughout the urchin's life, so they are never worn down completely. Let me read you this other caption up here. If you look closely, you will see sea urchins inside these holes. They have burrowed into rock on the shore of a Caribbean island. Can you see any if we look closely? Oh, I can kind of see one right there. Wow. Okay, let's check out the text on the page. There's just a little bit here. The colorful prickly sea urchin can anchor itself to rocks with its spines and tube feet 
so that the waves won't wash it away. As it holds on tight, it gnaws part of the rock away with its teeth. The sea urchin's mouth located on the underside of its body has five powerful white teeth and looks so much like an ancient Greek oil lantern that it has been called Aristotle's lantern. Time for our field guide. Let's see what we've already done. We did these lessons before. You did the sea star lesson, the kelp lesson, and now it is time for sea urchin. Start by copying the name of the organism right here. This is where you write sea urchin. Now I get to do my scientific illustration. I like to do the top and bottom, but you can choose if you just want to do one. So when I do the top view, I go ahead and make sure to do something that's kind of circle-ish, kind of like an oval maybe, and then lots and lots of spines. Maybe even thinner, I can show them coming out this way, all over. Keep going with those spines. And with the top view again, I can remember that this is the test right here, which is the skeleton or the, the part that gets left behind when the sea urchin dies, and that these are the spines. The anus, or the part where all the waste comes out, is hard to see. But I'll just put a little dot right here, maybe a little circle right here, and I can add that label. You don't have to write it again here, but I think it's a nice touch. All right, now let's show the bottom part, which to me is the most exciting part of the sea urchin. So here I'm gonna look like a nice circle, as best as I can. The part that I'm gonna start with is that mouth or that Aristotle's lantern. So right here, I'm gonna make a pentagon. One, two, three, four, five. It doesn't have to be perfectly regular, exactly the same. Put a little dot in the middle and then draw a line to each of those points. One, two, one, two, three, there we go, four, five. There's its five teeth, there we are. And there's this little area around it like this. Perfect. Now, this is the fun part. We get to show the spines and the tube feet. So remember, you've got all these spines kind of coming out, right? And the tube feet are gonna be right in here, kind of spindly with a little tube at the end. You see that? Let's do some more. A line. There's a little, kind of like a suction cup. You can do those all around. And remember, we have already have our spine label, so just put another line right there. And we can have even our test label can go over here. And then this is, remember, yep, this is part right here is the mouth or the teeth. So you can write either word. And then don't forget, this is super important, tube feet. That's how it moves around and also how it sticks onto the rock so it can handle it when the waves come crashing down. Lastly, take a moment to look and to have a conversation with someone next to you and to think, hmm, what does the sea urchin remind you of? What do you wonder about the sea urchin? What do you notice? Write down what your scientist brain thinks of right here. Tidepool Explorers, thank you so much for joining me today, learning all about sea urchins. I had a great time learning with you. Next time, we are going to learn all about something that looks like a plant, but it's not a plant. It is called a sea anemone. I cannot wait. See you next time.